side of 40 with a daughter only six months away from college, sometimes you just can't help but wonder. Like, what if I had taken that internship with the ad agency? But then I realize, being a mother is not all that different from the corporate world. You start out unsure, feeling your way, juggling all those little details that nobody really notices. Then you move up to management. Hi, this is Carly Ashby. I need to make an appointment for my daughter. A more challenging position where you learn to tell the difference between a real problem and whining. All the while still making sure everything gets done. One day, you reach a point where your insight and experience are appreciated. And before you know it, you're more than just a worker, you're a partner. Where you share the kind of mutual respect that can only be nurtured over the years by listening. But that's where the similarities end. Because unlike a corporate job, you never retire from being a mother. After all the scraped knees and messy rooms, grocery and dentist bills, the Girl Scout and PTA meetings, piano lessons, the school plays, concerts and sports practices, not to mention the driving lessons, it was spring of her senior year and she suddenly grew up. Even when your children grow up, they'll always need you and want to share things with you. At least you hope they do. Because if they don't, well, that just might turn out to be the hardest part of the job. Happy birthday, Carly. Oh, Ryder, it's beautiful. It's a new vegan recipe. Vegan, great. All right, blow out the candles, make a wish. <laughs> It's your birthday. Let me take care of this. Robert, you've already done enough already. Besides, you need to get home to your baby. No, I just talked to Peter. Cole is still down for his nap. And besides, I live right next door, so I can literally be there in two seconds if they need me. Thank you for everything you did for my party. It was so much fun. Well, speaking of fun, what does the birthday girl have planned for the rest of her evening? Hey, Mom. Trisha just texted me and wants to know if I can go to a movie. Can I go, please? It looks like the birthday girl is going to be waiting up for her daughter. Just be home by 11. Thanks. Love you. Oh, and happy birthday. Thanks, honey. Be safe. I think I was worried you wouldn't have anything to do tonight. <laughs> it's fine, writer. It'll give me a chance to write my blog. Okay, do not make me regret introducing you to the whole blogging world. What are you talking about? I love writing my blog. And I really think I have something to say. I just hate to see you alone on your birthday. I'm not alone. I have thousands of followers who need to see a picture of this vegan cake. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah? Troy, didn't know you were stopping by. Yeah, I was, um, I was wondering if maybe I could borrow 20 bucks just until next payday. Stu and I are going to hang out. Didn't you just get paid yesterday? Well, yeah, but I meant until I get paid next week. You really need to manage your money more responsibly. No, I do. It's just I have to buy new wheels for my board, and it's like you always say, priorities, right? Yeah, I also always say I won't be sending you money every time you blow through your monthly allowance once you're in college. So that would be a no. Ding, ding, ding. Thank you for playing. Better luck next time. Thanks, Dan. Really learned an important lesson today. Thanks, Dan Lauren. Have fun, kiddo. I am trying to teach him a lesson. And I'm trying to be his fun aunt. Not helping.
Jet Pan. <laughs> Night, Mom. Night, kiddo. If you're a baseball player and you get a hit every other time you step up to the plate, they put you in the Hall of Fame. If you're a parent with that same batting average, all you can think about is where you went wrong. Unfortunately, there's no minor league for parenting. Maybe there should be. Hello. Hi. I brought a centerpiece from the store. I thought it might help. Carly, it's beautiful. Yeah, well, what's a spring bake sale without a few flowers? Thank you. This all looks delicious. Well, that's kind of the idea. Hey, did you get an invite to the bloggers event at the Community Arts Center? Yeah, I got it. You're gonna go, right? I don't know. Oh, come on, Carly, you have to go. Blog readers love to put a name to a face. Plus, it's a really great way to get your numbers up. I'll think about it. I'm a little distracted right now. We just registered Sadie for classes at Community College. That's great. Yeah, she's happy. But not quite as happy as her mom, right? What does that mean? Well, you know, Sadie goes off to college. You have some time to maybe, you know, live it up a little. It's community college writer. She'll still be living at home. Living up is not exactly in the curriculum. Carla, it's been 14 years since Jeff walked out on you. And you've done a wonderful job raising Sadie. But it's springtime. It's a perfect time for a new beginning. Especially for you. Yeah, maybe you're right. But it is not easy to meet new people. And I'm way out of practice. Well, you just leave that up to me. Wait, what? Don't be so nervous. It's like riding a bicycle. Bucket, Carmen, not a toy. I need to see your throat again. So can you open your mouth like real wide? Mm -mm. No. Can you open your mouth real wide like a big old shark about to take a bite? No. No, why not? I don't want to be a shark. What do you want to be? I want to be a T-Rex. He just loves dinosaurs. <sighs> okay. Why don't you open your mouth like a big old T-Rex about to take a bite? There we go. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, okay. Oh, you just, yeah, just open your mouth wide. Okay, all right, go. You jump down. He really likes you, I can tell. Yeah. His throat is a little red, but I don't think it's strep. But we're going to send a swab down to the lab just to uh, be sure. Okay, Lauren. Morning, Tracy. Good morning. Would you uh, send Connor's swab over to the lab and see how fast they get back to us with the results? Absolutely, Doctor. I could come back in a few days, if you think that'll help. Uh, no, no, no. We'll just we'll see what the lab says, and Lauren will give you a call. Tracy, are you still at the same address over in Deerhurst Park? Same address. Just Connor and me. Me and Connor. That's not far from where Dr. Summers lives. No kidding. There's a little coffee place over there. What's the name of that place, Doctor? Uh, Main Street Coffee Shop. I know that place. He's there practically every morning. Maybe I'll see you there. Maybe. <laughs> All right, Connor, let's uh, get going. No, I kind of want to go. Okay. I want to play. Okay, well, we're going to play at home. I want to play, I want to play. Okay, I wanna yeah, play, I wanna sounds good. See you, Doctor. <laughs> These are the best of our new spring flowers, so just keep them watered and out of direct sunlight. Thank you. Good night, Lauren. Sure you won't change your mind about dinner? Love you, too.
Can I help you? Uh, yeah. No. You know, I might have some binoculars in the back if you think that would help. Sorry, I was just... Hi. Chicken taco. Excuse me? In the park? The, the food truck next to the flowers. Right, yes. Yesterday, you were the guy with the... Saw that, huh? Well, he does make a really juicy taco. Kind of worth it. So, um... Flowers. Good eye. Yeah, I mean, it smells springy in here. Good nose. That's that's why I, I came in here this morning to uh, try some of your finest spring flowers. Okay, well, um, what do you have in mind? I don't know. What do you recommend? Well, that depends. My personal favorites are roses. But is this a special occasion? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, possibly, probably not. What colored roses would you recommend? Well, um, yellow for friendship and red pretty much says I love you. <laughs> oh no, I think it's it's probably more of an ordinary occasion. Daisies are nice. Uh, they are bright and cheery and well, they pretty much say, hey, have a really ordinary day. That sounds perfect. Well, I'll just wrap these up for you. And bless this food and drink, we pray, and all who share with us today. Amen. Amen. It all looks so good. I can't thank you enough for the invitation. With such pleasant company, too. Actually, we've been meaning to introduce you two for quite a while now. I can't believe we haven't already met. I mean, going to the same church and all. Yeah, right. <laughs> Life's funny that way, though. <laughs> Don't you think so, Carly? Um, uh, sure. I, I mean, go along your whole life, just sailing along, and one day, out of the blue, you meet somebody. And right off, bam, you feel this zzz, zzz, connection. Especially in spring, everything is growing and so full of life. It's, it, it's the circle of life. <laughs> it's a circle of life. <laughs> so, Henry, I'm not sure if you knew that Carly writes a very popular blog. Uh, well, I wouldn't say popular. She's just being modest. It's all about a mother raising a teenage daughter and all of the joys and the trials that go along with it. People find it very insightful. Well, I just hope you're not so busy writing about being a mom that you neglect your real duties. <laughs> Excuse me? I should open wine? Yeah. Oh, none for me, thanks. I never touch alcohol. Wine would be fabulous. <laughs> I live next door. You really don't have to walk me home. A gentleman always sees a lady to her door call me old-fashioned. Oh, believe me, Henry, that's not what I would call you. As long as he call me. I'm auditioning for the church choir. Want to hear me sing? Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely when I long to be invited into Carly's home? Oh, it was a pleasure meeting you, Henry. Ah, <laughs> oh, spring, when a young man's fancy turns to thoughts of love. Oh. I agree we should take things slowly. Maybe I'll see you in church. I can't believe that we finally bumped into each other. <laughs> no, if I didn't know better, I might have thought you were trying to avoid me. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> See, I told you he liked you. You know, his father remarried last year, and honestly, I don't think he gives Connor the attention that he needs. That, that can be hard. Eat your food? No, I don't want to. Uh -huh. No, those are the same fries that are on your plate. I want yours. Do you mind? Oh, no, of course not. <laughs> you want ketchup? No, I want mustard. 
Connor's such a sweetheart. He really thrives on the hands-off instinctive parenting approach that Bestie Mom talks about in her blog. I'm sorry, who? Bestie Mom. She writes the blog Parenting from Soul. I don't read. Well, it's all about how to be a sensitive, emotionally available parent to your child without setting a lot of rules or boundaries. And I'm not afraid to admit that it's thanks to her blog that makes Connor who he is today. from the soul. Hmm. Vegan. Why? What's the point? <sighs> Juggling dad. Speaking as a single dad with a teenage son, I found your blog very enlightening, of course. I always try to learn from other people's mistakes. What? The idea that rules and guidelines can be replaced with listening to your child's needs, aka letting your kid get whatever they want, is just plain silly. Silly? I have seen the results of your parenting advice, and it's not pretty. Next time you feel the urge to give advice, don't. Bestie mom. Dear juggling dad, if you take the time to hear what your son wants to say, I'm sure you'll see it that it's not about getting, it's about sharing. Oh, please. Try it. You'll be amazed what a difference it makes. <laughs> for that, do ya? You okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just writing my blog. Don't go weird on me, Mom. There comes a time when we must ask ourselves, what is at the heart of our duty as a parent? As a father myself, I know that the joy I feel with my son is tempered by the knowledge I that each moment is more than just a blessing. Fortunately, the door came to It's also us. a responsibility. A responsibility to teach our children a love of right over wrong, of following the path of the virtuous, to be true to themselves. Mom, while seeking I was a thinking kindred. maybe I shouldn't go straight to college after I graduate. What? Alien to my mother's children. Maybe I should see the world a little first to travel. For your steadfast loving. Travel. According to your abundant Where? Return to me. I don't know. Africa? Or maybe the Indonesia. Your steadfast love is good. That sounds exciting. As parents, to provide our children with the guidance that they need to find their way in the world. She was completely oblivious to the fact that her son was terrorizing the entire restaurant, including me. Oh, that's the thing about women with kids. It's a package deal. No, no, I like kids. That's why I'm a pediatrician. This wasn't a kid. This was a, a tornado with dimples. This is your wife's fantastic idea. She wants you to be happy. Simon, look at me. Look at me. Don't I look happy? You look happy-ish. The point is, I don't need Lauren setting you up. Technically, you set yourself up. Come again? With those bright eyes and that cute smile, are you kidding? Half the women who bring their kids just want to give you a big hug and a warm meal. Come on, I'm being serious. So am I. Simon, come on. It's true, we get a lot of inquiries regarding your status. I don't have a status. Oh, maybe you should. Uh, okay, uh, then um, for future reference, my new status is not interested. Especially if you get your parenting advice from bestie mom. From what? Not what, who? It's a mommy blog. You know about this? Of course I do. A lot of the moms have passed it around. She has some good advice. Oh, please. Now you sound like dad and mom. Nothing wrong with the way we were raised. No, but it's a different world now. A lot of that old school approach just doesn't work anymore. Something you might want to keep in mind. Uh, what does that mean? Look, being the cool aunt and all, sometimes Troy talks to me, you know? About things. 
what kinds of things. The kind of things you should be talking with you about. We talk all the time. We had it all figured out. Two years of community college, then she transfers to university to get her degree. Now she's throwing darts on a map wanting to travel. But she never said anything? Well, first I heard of it. Well, if you don't know where to go, why don't you just tell her? Well, I can't do that. Why not? Our relationship has always been built on mutual respect and understanding. I don't just tell her what to do, we talk it through. Well, that's great, but Carly, sometimes you just gotta lay down the law. Oh, now you're sounding like juggling dad. Who? This incredibly arrogant father who's been posting on my blog. You wouldn't believe what he's been saying. Well, I can hardly wait to read it. Oh, you better hurry because I'm gonna delete it and block him. Just as soon as I figure out what I'm gonna say to Sadie. The way I see it, rules have a way of closing doors to any further discussion. Sharing with your child keeps those doors open to a future you can build together. You sound like a fortune cookie. Hello, bestie mom. After reading your last entry, I see you ignored my advice. But good news is, if this blog of yours doesn't work out, you have a great future in comedy. Seriously? because I haven't laughed this hard in a long time. Laugh all you want. If you don't listen to your son, don't be surprised when he stops listening to you. Your problem is, you think setting a few rules for your kid makes you a dictator. And your problem is, you're more interested in making rules than in listening to your son. This coming from someone who uses baseball analogies, a game that is played entirely by the rules. If you don't know the difference between baseball and life, then that makes you officially hopeless. I'd rather be hopeless than flaky. It's called passion, something you obviously know nothing about. Well, maybe not. But there's one thing I do know. If I ever need another good laugh, you will be hearing from me. Don't bother. You won't get an answer from me. Goodbye. Why can I care? Okay, so what was wrong with those last pair of jeans? Because I thought they looked really good on you. Sorry, I don't want mom jeans. I don't want them to look good on me. Okay, well, keep looking. Listen, I was thinking about what you were saying about traveling. I think we should talk about it. No, we're not gonna do this. We're not gonna do this. I'm not gonna help me. Hey! Hi! <laughs> How are you? Uh, good, great. How'd those daisies work out? Oh, they were great. They were very, um, ordinary. <laughs> um, Carly. By the way. Andy, it's great to, to finally meet you. You too. Uh, this is my daughter, Sadie. Hi. I... No, this is my son, Troy. Hi. It's chemistry class, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. How are you? I'm good. What are you fellas shopping for today? Oh, we're running shoes for, uh, trying to find the new 750s in red. Uh, have you looked at Saul's yet? Is that the one by Denim Law? Uh, yeah. I was going to go look for some jeans. Sure. Let's do it. Cool. All right. We'll be back. Oh. Uh... Meet you by the food court. Cool. Okay. So have uh, you been to college yet? Uh, well, we're waiting to see where he gets accepted. And then we're going to talk about financial aid. You know, all that fun stuff. What about Sadie? Well, we had a plan. Um, pretty good one, I thought. Now we're talking. Yeah, when Troy was born, I thought that um, as he got older, that this whole parenting thing would get easier. What about your wife? She passed away when Troy was seven. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's just him and I. And we talk, but, uh, well, we, we guess we grunt our meaning across. You know, it was just, I guess it's a form of talk, right? I know what you mean. After Sadie's father left, it was just the two of us. We were a little team. From the time she was two years old, we could talk about anything. Lately, not so much. Mm. Yeah, the other day, I shouted upstairs to try to ask what he wants for dinner. And, um... He texted me back. I can predict Sadie's moves, depending on how many emoticons she uses in any given message. What are you two talking about? Stuff.
So did you get his number? Hmm? Troy's dead. Oh, I, uh, what? No. You obviously like him. Well, sure. I mean, um, uh, seems like a nice enough guy. So what's the problem? We were just talking. Well, if you change your mind, I have Troy's number. So we can hook you two up. Listen, I, I think we should talk about this whole traveling thing. Trish warned me you're going to try to talk me out of it. You talk to Trish about this? Of course, she's my best friend. And this is, like, only the biggest decision of my life. Right. Um, I'm not going to try to talk you out of it. I just want to make sure you've thought this all the way through. Absolutely. You know, I, I definitely want to travel before I go to college. Any particular reason? Mom, there's so many possibilities. Just think about it. Anything could happen. Took the words right out of my mouth. There's Trish. She's waiting. Thanks for the ride, Mom. Uh, Trish will drop me off when I get back. Sadie. Have fun. Okay, Mom. Love you. I love you too. Help. My daughter wants to travel the world. I already can't sleep until she's home from a movie. What's it gonna be like when she's thousands of miles away? Not to mention what a bad idea it is for her to put off starting school. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, Lauren sent me the link to that Festy Mum blog. And you two really went at it. Oh, she had it coming. No, it was kind of cool the way you went back and forth like that. Kind of hot, actually. Hot? Oh, in a strictly PG kind of a way. I was just trying to make a point, Simon. People like that need to be called in the carpet once in a while. Sure. Just a shame you can't put that energy to better use. What's that supposed to mean? Look, I know Lauren can be a little gung-ho. On the other hand, meeting somebody wouldn't be so bad either. Uh, maybe I did meet somebody. Seriously? Okay, but you can't tell Lauren. All right, Simon, I'm serious. Because she's going to be all over me for the details. Scouts. Honor, man. Who, who is she? Uh, my name's Carly. She, uh, runs a flower shop. I guess we don't really know each other, but, uh, just had coffee. And... Coffee's good. We really seem to hit it off. So what are you waiting for? Ask her out. Go for it. Think? Yeah. Time to get back in the game, buddy. <sighs> Maybe you're right. Troy, my man. Hey, Uncle Simon. Hey, dinner's almost ready. You, uh, going somewhere? Yeah, I just finished my homework, so I'm gonna go get something to eat with Stu and hit the skate park. It's Thursday. Lasagna night. Dad, I'm guessing it'll be Thursday next week. I'll have some lasagna then. See you at 10. Uh, make it 9. School night. Dad, seriously? Everyone else can stay up till 11. You're not everyone else. All right, forgot. See you at 9. Good night, Uncle Simon. Later, Troy. It's a school night. Please. Looks like you didn't block me after all. You probably just forgot. Unless, of course, you really are interested in what I have to say. Don't flatter yourself. It sounds to me like it's time for another reality check. In a situation like this, somebody has to be the grown-up, and that somebody is you. If you don't want her to travel, if you think she should start school, tell her. Like I'd take advice from you? I even have a suggestion let her go away to college. That way she gets to travel and start school. Great idea. Except she'll still be thousands of miles away. Maybe, but she'll be in school. And isn't that what you want? What I want is what's best for my daughter. If you really want what's best for her, stop trying to be her best friend and be her parent. What's wrong with being both? You try being both and you end up being Neither. Or you try being both and you find out what a great person your kid is. Yeah, well, good luck with that, bestie mom. Right back at you. I don't get it. 
She just doesn't talk to me like she used to. Yeah, well, that's normal. She's just trying to break out and be her own person. I mean, we all did it. Well, that's just it. I've always let her be her own person. I've never held her back. I've never set a bunch of rules. It's it's always been about openness and mutual respect between us. Yeah, well, maybe you should think more about what juggling dad was saying. Wait a minute. You're not actually reading all that stuff he's been saying. It's kind of fun. It is not fun. Do not say fun. I'm definitely sensing some chemistry between the two of you. You think? But sometimes he makes a good point. Like telling Sadie exactly what you think. Oh my gosh. Oh. What? That guy. I had coffee with him. What? When? Do I look all right? Yeah, you look great. Wait, who is he? Never mind. Uh, okay, hey, so uh, not to my son, and keep the soil moist, and you'll be fine. Oh, uh, okay. How's it going? Good, yeah. And you? Great, great, yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, you're, you're busy. No, I mean, uh, no. Uh, thank you for coming in and have a nice day. Thanks for dropping by. Enjoy this wonderful spring weather. So, what'd you have in mind today? More daisies? Actually, I was, I was hoping for something a, a little less ordinary. For. Like a special occasion? I was hoping so, yeah. For example, if it's like a date, then uh, roses would be nice, a red rose would be very special. I was thinking tacos. Tacos? Uh, yeah, um, you know, you and me, lunch together, that kind of thing. Are you asking me out on a date? Yeah, that is the general gist of the direction I was kind of headed. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not doing this for, it's been a long time since I did this. I'm not, no, I'm not no, this for you're it. doing great. You're just saying that because I sound like a ninth grader asking a senior high school cheerleader to the prom, aren't you? No, I promise. Okay. So, so yeah, tacos? Tacos sound perfect. Great. I'll, I'll meet you at the park around noon tomorrow? I'll be there. Then it's a date. It's a date. Bye, Carly. Bye. Just, um, I'm having lunch with someone tomorrow, trying to figure out what to wear. Someone? Okay. Troy's dad. Yeah, all right, Mom. Yeah? You've obviously got to look good, but you can't look too good because you've got to leave somewhere to go fashion-wise if there's a second date. That's very insightful. <laughs> I'm in high school. This is what we do. All right, give me details. Tell me what I'm doing, where are we going? Okay, uh, very simple. Tacos in the park. Yeah, no problem. Hey, listen, honey. Um, I've been thinking about about your plans to travel next year, and um, I say go for it. Really? Thank you, Mom. Yeah, if you want to go off to a strange country where you don't speak the language or know the local customs, then who am I to stand in your way? I mean, Mom, that's why I want to go. You know, like, I, I want to learn. Yeah, and um, what better way to learn than to have absolutely no help from anyone? Yeah, not even me. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. This is your chance to jump into the deep end of the pool, kiddo. Sink or swim, all on your own. I'm really proud of you. Thanks, Mom. What's the occasion? Uh, nothing. Just seeing if his shirt still fits. Whatever you say, Dad. I have a date. Cool. I look okay? Sure, I, I guess. Thanks. Maybe untuck the shirt, let her know right off. You're chill. Chill. Got it. Thanks. No problem. Hey. 
So those are crocuses. They come in walks in the park, and these tacos got me through some pretty bumpy times after my husband left. Caught a play of nature while savoring cilantro and honey. How do you do that? See, I, I end up wearing half of mine. Oh, easy. It's all in the wrist. Come on, I'll show you. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 We're doing it wrong, only you. And I could see that this little girl was terrified of the needle. I mean, I wasn't going to get anywhere near her. So, I told her that, according to our records, her teddy bear also needed his shots, and would she mind if I did him first? Thinking on your feet, Doc. And the story got around, and ever since then, I've been known as the teddy bear doctor. Aww. Now, all of my patients bring in their stuffies to get a shot before they do. You must be a really wonderful doctor. No, I think what, what's wonderful is that I get to do something I love every day. That's how I feel about flowers. How'd you choose flowers? Well, I knew I couldn't keep working in an office job nine to five and raise Sadie alone the way I wanted to. And, well, one of my favorite quotes is by Emerson. The earth laughs in flowers. I wanted to be a part of that laughter. And you meet the nicest people in flower shops. <laughs> that too. The only drawback is nobody ever thinks to give flowers to a florist. I just thought that traveling not only sounded like fun, but, I don't know, a different way to get an education. Now, I don't see why it has to be one or the other. Maybe I could do both. That was fun. <laughs> Thank you. Next time, you want go for, like, for an actual dinner, like when the table is eating <laughs> utensils. I'd like that. Hand me your phone. The last time I did this, you had to actually write the number down. This way you can't lose the piece of paper. I would never lose your number. That sounded emphatic. I like emphatic. better than nice. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Wait, Mom. Um, do you think I'd be too flaky if I change my mind about traveling next year instead of going to college? Change your mind? I mean, I've just been thinking and, I don't know, maybe I should go to school. Well, if that's what you want, honey. And I was reading what that guy wrote on your blog, too, about, about maybe going away to college. Okay, wait. What guy? What was his name? Juggling dad? Uh-huh. I mean, it makes sense. If I go away to college, then I still get to travel, but I'm staying in school. Uh, that's true. I mean, it's, it's kind of perfect. This guy must be some sort of genius or something. Oh, he's something, all right. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Yes. I don't believe it. Oh, I was 
hoping I would run into you here. Are you writing a blog? The adventures of raising four kids in a three-bedroom house, each day more exciting than the next. But between you and me, it's cheaper than therapy. Yeah. <laughs> so true. Well, I will definitely look for it. But what about you? I mean, honey, you are really on to something. I am? Yeah, this thing you got going with juggling dad. Oh, no, 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 no. That's oh, just... no, no, it's brilliant. Everybody's talking about it. They are? Yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna get back to my table, but it's so great to see you. Yeah, you too. And I'll see you at the Blogger Symposium next month. We'll have coffee, catch up. You can tell me about the secret of your success. <laughs> I love that. Good see you. I'm going there for a second. I got a book out of Sure. The rest of the week is pretty full, so we'd need to squeeze Bobby Sawyer in today. His mom says that mesh just won't go away. Andy, are you listening? What? Yeah. Bobby Sawyer. Something you want to tell me? Not really, no. I've known you all your life, little brother, and I've only seen that smile once before. The day you met your future wife. I don't know what you're talking about. And even if I didn't know you so well, you should realize by now that my husband can't keep a secret. Yep, yeah, that's, that's probably true. Now, who is she? <sighs> She's just someone I met. Does this someone have a name? It's Carly. You really like her. She's great. Well, I mean, I just met her and all, so... But every time I see her, I... When do I meet her? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. What? I didn't mean right away, just whenever you... Oh! I heard the bookstore was sponsoring this event. Bestie, Mom. This I gotta see. Andy! shop later. Hi. Hi. Well, I was just Hi. saying to Connor that we needed to make another appointment to see Dr. Summers, and here you are. Here you? <laughs> I just can't get over how much he likes you. Oh. He was so disappointed that we didn't hear from you after our dinner. Yeah, I got busy with, with medicine. Hi. Well, I thought that I would make another appointment so you could take another look at Connor's ear. Throat? Ear? Um, well, just so happens, I, I have a, a slot available right now. Really? Yes. Yes, yes great. Yeah, come with me. Let's, let's All right. Come on. Let me die, let me die. All right, Connor. Let's go. Let me okay, we'll get a toy later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go. Would you look at that? You know, I never realized how many of these mommy bloggers have written books. I don't know. Maybe I should do that. You know, write some sort of a, a journal slash vegan cookbook kind of thing. What do you think, Carly? Hmm. What are you doing? Oh, oh, nothing. Just checking my messages. Or lack thereof. This wouldn't have anything to do with the guy in the flower shop, would it? He's a pediatrician, and we kind of had a date. Okay, so you've been holding out on me. No, no, I mean, it was super casual. But it was really fun. And there was a kiss. Oh, stop it. But he said he'd call. It's so early. I mean, he's a pediatrician, right? He probably works all kinds of crazy doctor hours, right? Yeah. You're fine. He'll call. <laughs> Keep going. You and Mr. Floppy were both very brave today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. So that was our last patient of the day. I'm going to go ahead and take off. All right. Let's hear it. What? First of all, you rush into that community art center like those mommy bloggers are rock stars. Then you run out like the building's on fire. Yeah. That was just after I found out that, um, Carly is bestie mom. But aren't you juggling, Dad? I know, but... I mean, how was I supposed to know I was writing those things to Carly? What are you gonna do? Well, if I tell her, she's never gonna talk to me again. If I don't tell her and she finds out later, not the ideal way to begin a relationship. No. I mean, the best thing to do is just walk away. Best for who? 
She told me to call her. I don't want to call her. How can I call her? But you do want to keep seeing her? <sighs> of course I do. Then keep seeing her. Let juggling dad vanish into the ether. <sighs> what? You're a nice guy, Andy. That's the person she knows. This other guy, juggling dad, let's call it a phase. But it's over now. So just forget about him. Move on. And never, ever bring it up again. to give another shout out to Juggling Dad for all the great parenting advice. Thanks to you, my daughter's no longer set on traveling the world. Instead, she's decided to go away to school. Far away. matter where she goes, as long as it's not here. But that's not your problem. No, your only concern is coming up with another snappy answer. And she hates me. Uh, did you know there's a great humanities program in Anchorage? I had no idea. Alaska? Crazy, right? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I gotta go to bed. I love you. I love you too, baby. So why don't you just call him? Oh, wait, say what? Oh, gee, hi. I hope this doesn't seem too pathetic since I haven't heard from you. Oh, well, I think there's a perfectly good explanation. So do I. He's simply not interested. Okay, that is not what I meant. <laughs> it's all right, Ryder. You know, he's actually doing me a favor. I have plenty on my plate now that Sadie's decided to go away to college. Yeah, how's that going? Apparently, they have a really nice humanities program in Anchorage. Thank you so much, Juggling Dad. Who, by the way, has also decided to go radio silent all of a sudden. Okay, but don't... We not like him? Okay, but the point is, what is wrong with these men that just vanish into thin air? But you know what? I don't even care. Because I'm through with men. I'm through with all of them. Good morning, Carly. Well, you're looking very lovely this fine... Give it a rest, Henry. Hey. for you. Um, hypothetical. Let's say that you were um, messaging with somebody like, on, on a blog or something like that, and um, you weren't using your real name. Mm -hmm. Is there any way 
that person could figure out who you really were? Like, I don't know, like trace it or something? Nah, uh, those sites usually have pretty good security. You'd have to be some kind of hacker or something. Okay. Hey, are you seeing Sadie's mom again? Yeah, that's complicated. Hmm. Yeah, that's usually what guys say when they chicken out. <sighs> good point. No card? It was too small. There wasn't enough room to write all the things I wanted to say. Got any flowers? Yeah, I think it's a shame that no one gives florists flowers. I'm sorry, Carly. I haven't felt this way about anyone in a long time. And I, I got scared. What was I supposed to think when you just disappeared like that? No excuse, Len. I wouldn't blame you if you told me to hit the road, but if you give me one more chance. I thought you liked daisies. I do, but you, you told me roses were for special occasions, so I... Don't be charming. I mean it. I want to stay mad at you longer. Fair enough. While we're on the subject, I was scared, too. You were? I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time, either. Lasagna. <laughs> Lasagna? Lasagna Thursday. Why don't you come over to my house tomorrow night and let me cook you dinner? You should get that. Oh, okay. It's from you. This is my address. You had your address and a text message waiting to be sent? I'm an optimist. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Hey. Thank you for the roses. Thursday? Uh, yeah. Actually, I was gonna tell you. Um, so if you want to uh, hang with Stu tonight, uh, maybe grab something to eat. And what the heck? Hit the skate park after. And take your time. I won't. Uh, won't mind. You have a date tonight. As a matter of fact, with Sadie's mom. Yeah. All right, Dad. <laughs> Oh, and I'm running a little bit behind, so why don't you take the car? <laughs> I'm kind of liking this whole new dating dad thing you got going on. Go, go. <laughs> Later, dad. Go. So there I am. I'm all set. You know, I've been training for months. And um, the instructor pops the hatch. And suddenly, I am staring 12,000 feet straight down, and I am wondering why I'm about to jump out of this perfectly good airplane. Good question. And this guy he starts yelling in my ear. I mean, he's saying all the right things, but...
she didn't tell me. Apparently she's been sick the last couple of... But I don't want... I know you're busy. No, no. How long have you been waiting here? Over an hour. Hi, Cindy. I'm Dr. Summers. You remember me? You can call me Andy. Hi. Hi. So, uh, not feeling so, huh, huh? <laughs> no. No? Feeling tired? Lethargic? Uh -huh. Okay. You came to the right place. Um, who is her regular doctor? Dr. Sheridan. But Andy, really, you don't have to do this. No, no, wait right here. I'm gonna find us a room. <laughs> <laughs> Got your records from Dr. Sheridan. Looks like you're a pretty healthy young lady. Yeah. Which means we're gonna need to run some tests to find out what's really going on with you. But don't be nervous, okay? Okay. Your mom's just outside. You want me to ask her to come in? I don't want her to worry. Oh, she's your mom, kind of comes with the territory. She worries too much about me, about my going away to school. Well, that's a big decision. I mean, you gotta find a school that's right for you, right? Yeah, but how do you know which one's right? Your mom's a pretty smart lady. You should talk to her about that. I do. I can just tell how much it bothers her when I talk about going away. I'll probably end up at a community college like she wants. You know... Sadie, I, I can't speak for your mom, but um, I'm pretty sure she's more interested in what you want. I want to go to Alaska, but I also want to stay here. I know how crazy that sounds. No. No, it sounds like you love your mother very much. You know, there are some good schools in your pie. If you found one you liked, you could probably come home on weekends whenever you wanted. She's going to be fine. She's got a mild form of pleurisy, which is inflammation around the lungs. That's what hurts when she coughs. So, uh, what do we need to do? Well, we caught it early enough so we can treat it with antibiotics and a lot of rest. And she's gonna be tired for a while, but, uh, she'll be back to being her old self again before you know it. Thank you, Andy. Carly, I'm sorry. You don't have to say anything. No, I do. I do. I mean, I apologize for what I wrote, but, uh... I'm even more sorry that I didn't take your advice. What advice? What you wrote on your blog about listening to your kids. It made sense. I just... I didn't hear it. You were right, too. About being honest with our kids, even when they don't want to hear. How else are we going to help them make right decisions? Well, look at us. A couple of parents, huh? Look, I'll write her a prescription and leave it at the front. Okay. She can go whenever she's ready, okay? Take care. You too. I'm not late. No, you're right on time. Oh, well, um, I'm just gonna get something to eat, so. How about a, uh, milkshake? Mint chocolate chip? Is there any other kind? Hit it. So, tell me about your friend. What? I got home just before you did. She looks nice. What's what's her name? Rebecca. We just hang out sometimes, you know. And she's the reason you wanted to stay out later tonight. Spend time with her. It's okay. No. No, it's not okay. I was mad at myself and I took it out on you. And you're right, I don't, I don't listen. I'm sorry about that. That is gonna change. I kinda get it though. What? Look, I know it hasn't been easy for you to be a single parent, but I want you to know I think you're a great dad. Yeah, absolutely. 
I just think maybe you need to have a little more faith that I was listening to everything you were saying, even when it didn't seem like it. Thanks. Now, maybe you should start thinking a little more about yourself. What are you talking about? Come on, Dad, you think I don't know that you have a thing for Sadie's mom? Oh, yeah. I think that ship sailed. Do you like her? Yeah. But I mean, do you like her? Yeah. So fix it. When did you get to be so smart? just don't work out. It's hard, but I'll just have to accept it and move forward. Mom, you need me. I should stay. <laughs> I don't think so. Why? I am so proud of you, kiddo. You've grown up to be an incredible person and a really great friend. I think that's why I wanted to keep you close. Just being around you. I, I enjoy you. I like you. I know I can't keep you to myself forever. Mom, I feel like sometimes I know exactly what I want to do, and then sometimes I just get so confused. Oh, sweet pea. As soon as you are up to it, we are going to have a good long talk about next year. And I promise you, whatever you decide, we'll figure it out together. But right now, you need to get some rest. <laughs> oh, and I've got to catch up on my reading. Mom, I love you. I love you, baby girl. I told you lately, I'm proud of you. No. Why? You've done a great job with Troy. You sound like Dad and Mom. That's a good thing. Thank you. moms would attract this much attention. I know, I can't believe it either. Anyways, I just wanted to say hi, but listen, I gotta go in a minute. Everybody's been asking about you and juggling dad. What about him? Well, it's been a couple of weeks since you two crossed swords. What's going on? Oh, no, no, that's over. Not gonna be hearing from him anymore. Too bad. It was fun. Yeah, I want to slap him silly kind of way. <laughs> this is the garden pea flavor. Enjoy. Have you seen Carly? Yeah. No. Henry, what are you doing here? I know, right? This blogging stuff is so boring. But I'm sure Carly will be thrilled to know I'm here to support her. I'm going to surprise her. Shh. Oh, Jesus. Perfect. Thanks. See you in a minute. Thanks, honey. Are you sure you're feeling up to this? Mom, I'm fine. The antibiotics really did the trick. Okay, well, listen, I've been thinking, as long as you're feeling up to it, maybe we should uh, plan a little road trip next weekend. Where are we going? Well, you should start looking at schools. You can't decide where you want to go if you haven't seen them for yourself. That would be great. It'll give me a chance to really plan out my next steps, you know, figure out where I want to go or what I even want to do. I love that. I just want to make sure you're not doing this for me. Um, 
Sometimes I need you. And this is exactly what I need right now. We should go inside. Morning, everybody, and welcome to the fifth annual Mom Blogger Symposium. We have bloggers here from every corner of the world. Are you guys excited? Before we move on to the scheduled events, we had kind of a special request. A lot of you might recognize the name, so I won't waste time with introductions, and we want to hear what's on your mind. Thank you, Carissa, for, for giving me a moment of your time. I know everyone here is probably busy, so I promise this will just take a second. My name is Andy Summers, but some of you might know me better as Juggling Dad. Yes, I'm that guy who, uh, who thought he was qualified enough to tell everyone else the right way to be a parent. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's pretty funny. Um, well, I can tell you it didn't take long for me to find someone who was more than willing to, um, how shall I say this, educate me on the subject. Now, you know her as Bestie Mom, but her real name is Carly. And the truth is, she is the best mom one of the best people I've ever met. After meeting her in person, it didn't, didn't take very long before I was falling for her. But after some of the things that juggling dad had said or written online, I was scared that she might not like Andy after she found out we were the same person. So I didn't tell her. And that was the biggest mistake I've ever made. That's why I'm here today. Carly, I was never happier than when I was with you. And I know I have no right to ask this, but I promise you, if you will give me one more, one more chance, I will do everything I can to make you as happy as you make me. told me that yellow roses were for friendship and red meant I love you. I'll let you decide. Can I have both? When you're a mom on the other side of 40, with a daughter only six months away from college, sometimes you just can't help but wonder. Like, what if we had taken that internship with the ad agency? But then I realize, being a mother is not all that different from the corporate world. You start out unsure, feeling your way, juggling all those little details that nobody really notices. I'm hungry. 
Then you move up to management. Hi, this is Carly Ashby. I need to make an appointment for my daughter. A more challenging position, where you learn to tell the difference between a real problem and whining. Honey, we'll be home soon. All the while still making sure everything gets done. One day, you reach a point where your insight and experience are appreciated. And before you know it, you're more than just a worker. You're a partner. Where you share the kind of mutual respect that can only be nurtured over the years by listening. But that's where the similarities end. Because unlike a corporate job, you never retire from being a mother. After all the scraped knees and messy rooms, grocery and dentist bills, the Girl Scout and PTA meetings, piano lessons, the school plays, concerts and sports practices, not to mention the driving lessons, it was spring of her senior year and she suddenly grew up. Even when your children grow up, they'll always need you and want to share things with you. At least you hope they do. Because if they don't, well, that just might turn out to be the hardest part of the job. Happy birthday, Carly. Oh, Ryder, it's beautiful. It's a new vegan recipe. Vegan, great. All right, blow out the candles, make a wish. <laughs> Carly, what are you doing? It's your birthday, let me take care of this. Ryder, you've already done enough already. Besides, you need to get home to your baby. No, I just talked to Peter. Cole is still down for his nap. And besides, I live right next door, so I can literally be there in two seconds if they need me. Thank you for everything you did for my party. It was so much fun. Well, speaking of fun, what does the birthday girl have planned for the rest of her evening? Hey, Mom. Trish just texted me and wants to know if I can go to a movie. Can I go, please? It looks like the birthday girl is going to be waiting up for her daughter. Just be home by 11. Thanks. Love you. Oh, and happy birthday. Thanks, honey. Be safe. I think I was worried you wouldn't have anything to do tonight. <laughs> it's fine, writer. It'll give me a chance to write my blog. Okay, do not make me regret introducing you to the whole blogging world. What are you talking about? I love writing my blog. And I really think I have something to say. I just hate to see you alone on your birthday. I'm not alone. I have thousands of followers who need to see a picture of this vegan cake. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah? Troy, didn't know you were stopping by. Yeah, I was, um... I was wondering if maybe I could borrow 20 bucks, just until next payday. Stu and I are going to hang out. Didn't you just get paid yesterday? Well, yeah, but I meant until I get paid next week. You really need to manage your money more responsibly. No, I do. It's just I have to buy new wheels for my board, and it's like you always say. Priorities, right? Yeah, I also always say I won't be sending you money every time you blow through your monthly allowance once you're in college. So that would be a no. Ding, ding, ding. Thank you for playing. Better luck next time. Thanks, Dan. Really learned an important lesson today. Thanks, Dan Lauren. Have fun, kiddo. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to teach him a lesson. And I'm trying to be his fun aunt. Don't help me, Lauren. player and you get a hit every other time you step up to the plate, they put you in the Hall of Fame. If you're a parent with that same batting average, all you can think about is where you went wrong. Unfortunately, there's no minor league for parenting. Maybe there should be. Hello. 
Hello. Hi. I brought a centerpiece from the store. I thought it might help. Carly, it's beautiful. Yeah, well, this is a spring bake sale without a few flowers. Thank you. This all looks delicious.